I'm here at the University of Helsinki uh, teaching a course and every Tuesday I give it in this room and have this magnificent Steinway piano apparently once played by Sibelius. But what I want to do today is to introduce you to a new article of mine published in Methods in Ecology and Evolution. And the name of the article is Size and Shape in the Measurement of Multivariate Proximity. My field is multivariate analysis, and I've worked for more than 25 years with ecologists, especially in the area of diversity and ordination. Ordination methods depend on the proximity function that is chosen by the researcher to quantify differences between samples. The two most popular choices are the so-called Bray-Curtis dissimilarity and the chi-square distance, with the choice generally depending on which school of thought the researcher comes from, what literature he or she follows, and especially what software is easily available. The chi-square distance, which underlies correspondence analysis and canonical correspondence analysis, or CCA, operates on relative species abundances or relative biomasses, etc. Thus, this distance analyzes what can be called pure shape differences between samples, that is, compositional differences where total abundance has been eliminated from each sample. When it comes to the Bray-Curtis dissimilarity, however, I've always wondered what this proximity measure actually quantifies. Does it measure just shape differences? Or does it include some information about the size differences between samples as well? Some authors say that it measures difference in species composition. But what does this really mean? A simple example shows that Bray-Curtis can be influenced by total abundances as well as relative ones. So suppose that there are two samples of species counts, with the second being twice the first, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 adding up to 15, and 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 adding up to 30. These two samples have the same shapes, but different sizes. Euclidean distance is the square root of the sum of squared differences, that is the square root of 55, and the Bray-Curtis is the sum of the absolute differences divided by the total count of the two samples, that is one-third. Both these proximity measures would increase if the second sample is increasingly bigger than the first while they both maintain the same shape, that is the same relative counts. So the Bray-Curtis is definitely sensitive to differences in the total counts. If the counts are expressed as relative ones, called compositions or profiles, which sum to one, then the two profiles are identical and the Euclidean distance as well as the Bray-Curtis dissimilarity are clearly both zero. Now let's make a simple change in the data by interchanging the values in the second and fourth columns between the two samples. The two sets of counts now have different shapes but almost identical sizes. Since the individual differences between the two samples have not changed, the Euclidean distance and Bray-Curtis dissimilarity are still the square root of 55 and one-third respectively. The proximity measures between the profiles are now no longer zero. Notice that in this example the Bray-Curtis has behaved practically identically to the Euclidean distance, even though the Euclidean distance would never be chosen by ecologists as a proximity measure between sets of counts. In the paper, I present a way of quantifying the components of size and shape in a matrix of proximities between samples, using functions in the vegan package in R. These two components can never be completely separated, as there is always a part of the variance in the proximities that confounds them both. But one can isolate the size component after partialing out shape, and likewise the shape component after partialing out size. For example, using a data set of fish counts at sampling points across the Barents Sea, here are the estimated components summing to 100% of the Bray-Curtis dissimilarity applied to the original abundance counts. From the top there is the part due to size after partialing out shape, then the part confounding both of them in light blue, then the part due to shape after partialing out size, 
And finally, the unexplained residual part. The part due to size is 11.9% of the total Bray Curtis variance. Since it is customary to apply a root transformation to the accounts before computing the Bray Curtis, the next set of bars shows what happens when the fourth root transformation is applied to the counts. The part due to size is reduced to 6.7%, but it is still present. In other words, conclusions about differences between the samples using the Bray Curtis, for example in a permutation test, would be influenced by the fact that differences in total abundance are being incorporated into these proximities. Finally, when using a proximity measure such as the chi-square that operates on relative abundances, the part due to size practically vanishes as expected, so that differences between the samples are just differences in their shapes. Apart from a simulation exercise in the article, which would further convince you that Bray Curtis incorporates size differences between samples, I also show this CCA ordination of some experimental data involving species counts in several control samples as well as two sets of treatment samples. These 95% confidence ellipses suggest that there is a significant difference between the control and treatment 2, but not between the control and treatment 1. This can be confirmed by permutation testing, sometimes called Perminova, where, for example, the p-value of 0.39 concludes that difference between C and T1 is non-significant. And this is a difference in shape, because the chi-square distance is used in CCA. On the other hand, the Perminova, when Bray Curtis is used, indicates a significant difference between C and T1. This is due to the fact that there are size differences between the samples. These box plots of the total abundances show that the treatment samples generally have lower abundance counts than the control samples. These size differences are also incorporated into the Bray Curtis dissimilarity and contribute to the measured differences between the control and treatment samples. Some of the major conclusions of my article are that one should be aware of the size and shape components in a particular study. I would recommend that you test the effects of size and shape separately in your investigation of multivariate differences between your samples. That is, perform a univariate test of size differences and separately, using a distance measure such as chi-square or Hellinger, which operates strictly on relative values, perform a multivariate test of shape differences. I hope you enjoyed this short introduction, so now read the article. And for me, I'm just going to take five.